Those of you who have not come across me in the past, my name is Pete Nest, and I'm going to be uh, your host once again today. Uh, so this is the third and final session of our first R Studio Cloud Live series. Now, in terms of housekeeping, unlike prior events, we're actually going to start with a live cloud demo. Uh, then to follow, um, much like in the past, we're going to have a, a live Q and A. Now, there's no need to wait till the demo's over. Feel free to ask any questions along the way in the YouTube live chat. And at this point, I'd actually like to introduce my colleague, Mine Chetinkaya Rundel, uh, who is a professional educator and a data scientist here at our studio, as well as a professor um, in academia. Hi, Mine. Hello. Uh, thanks for having me here today. Um, and I'm excited to talk about our studio cloud today. Uh, so I use our studio cloud both as part of my life at our studio and also as an educator at Duke University as well. And my goal today is to talk to you a little bit about both how I use our studio cloud for teaching and also give you a little bit of tips and tricks. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Um, oh. Apologies for that. Let's try that one more time. All right, I think we can put it back on screen now. Great. Um, so, um, if you are interested in getting a hold of these slides, you can find them at rstd.io slash rscloud-demo. Um, I will show this link at the end as well, and there will be a bunch of uh, kind of uh, demos throughout. So the slides only uh, give you a glimpse of part of what I'm going to say, but if you would like to get a hold of the PDF, you can do so there. So let's first talk a little bit about what our Studio Cloud is. Um, our Studio Cloud looks just like this. When you land on our Studio.cloud and you log in, um, you can see that you have a place for your projects and you can start with a new project. And we'll start with an R Studio project for now. And you'll see that in my browser, I have something that looks just like our studio if I had it uh, locally on my computer as well. And I can give it a name so that outer shell is a little bit different than what I tend to have locally uh, on my computer uh, where I can get, name my projects. But beyond that, I have my console, I have my environment app, everything is as I know it. What's happening is that the compute is happening on our studio cloud as opposed to happening on my computer. Well, what that tells me is that if this lives on the web, I should be able to easily share it with others as well. So a lot of what we're going to talk about today is how not just how you create our studio cloud projects, but also how you share it with others, particularly in the context of teaching how you share it with your students. Um, but before we get there, maybe let's answer the question, why would I want our studio in the cloud in the first place? So instead of working locally, why might I want that? Well, particularly in the context of teaching, if you are going to be teaching R with our studio, um, but your students are going to be using our studio locally, um, they're going to have to do a few things when they get to the first class. They're going to have to install R. They're going to have to install R studio. And they're going to have to install a bunch of packages that you might use throughout the semester. Um, that's actually not that difficult necessarily, but you do have to utter these words to them, right? These things tend to work relatively easily for majority of us, um, but it becomes a thing you have to walk them through before you get to the exciting part of doing data analysis. Then you also need to talk to them a little bit about what's installing a package versus loading a package. And if you, like me, teach with version control, you also have to get your students to install Git locally on their computers as well. And trying to hit all five of these major bullet points in the first 10 minutes of the class is probably not going to happen. Realistically, you'll end up having to uh, set aside a bunch of time for it and potentially do uh, quite a bit of debugging for maybe a small number of your students, but there will be some who will get stuck on some of these stages. Um, Instead of starting off your teaching with lots of friction points, you might want to be living in this land with much less friction where you go to our studio.cloud in your browser, you log in and you can start coding. Um, what I'm always trying to get my students to, uh, uh, where I'm always trying to get my students is a place where when they sit down to work on their computer and they're like, all right, I'm gonna work on my stats or my data science course, it doesn't take them more work to get started than 
you know, launching a video on Netflix, for example. And that's how easily you can get started um, with uh, uh, something like this. Um, now, we talked about why our studio in the cloud. So where they go to could be our studio.cloud or could be other options as well. So how do we achieve an access to our studio in the cloud? Uh, one option is using the RStudio Workbench, which I'll just talk about briefly here and then move away from. But there may be reasons why this is the uh, this may be what you prefer. So if you have sysadmin experience yourself or IT support, perhaps from your university, and you also have some either hardware or a local virtual machine or some cloud computing credit where you could be running the compute. And obviously, you yourself have a bit of our studio experience to be teaching with it. This might be um, an option for you. So our studio offers uh, our studio workbench, which you can run um, kind of in your browser um, once it's been set up for you. Um, and you can get the software for um, for teaching purposes for free from our studio. And I've put on the slide the link to our academic pricing page if you'd like to take a look to find out more about that offering. Um, the, if you would like to set things up in this way, there is a bit of setup and that's why I have the first bullet point about either having sysadmin experience or IT support available to you. But if those are things that you are able to do and you are able to set things up in a way that where your students can authenticate and use the platform, um, do, um, you know, um, you may you may find this um, article we have in the American Statistician called Infrastructure and Tools for Teaching Computing Throughout the Statistical Curriculum Helpful, where we describe our setup that we have at Duke University, where we use um, a version of this setup for getting our students to do uh, computing in their browser. Um, another option is instead of having to needing to have all three of these, if you just have our studio experience yourself as an instructor, but maybe not the sysadmin experience and not the kind of the machine where you could be running this on, our studio cloud might be the right option for you. So the setup is um, a lot less cumbersome and a lot less resource intensive. Um, so that's what we're going to be mostly talking about today. Now that hopefully we've set the stage for there may be a pedagogical need for getting your students to start computing in the cloud as opposed to locally and kind of giving you giving you a lay of the land of what are your options for doing this with our studio. Um, let's talk a little bit more about why our studio cloud. Beyond the fact that it does not require IT experience to set up, it also has some really nice bells and whistles that are designed particularly for teaching. For example, there is the notion of a workspace uh, where you can organize your class as a workspace. So either if you're teaching multiple classes in the same semester or from semester to semester, you're able to kind of um, have them organized in a nicely contained way. Um, there is a notion of roles. So things like instructor, teaching assistant, or student can be assigned to particular roles on our Studio Cloud. Um, you can turn your project. So I just showed you earlier how to fire up a project on our Studio Cloud. You can turn that into an assignment that your students can uh, quickly get started with. And um, as an instructor, something I really, really like is that you can peek into student projects. Um, so that is really very similar to being able to, you know, be, say, in a computer lab with your students. And um, if they have a question kind of peeking over their shoulder um, and being able to do this has been particularly helpful when we've had to do a bunch of remote teaching. Um, the other thing is that you can set up a base project that contains any R packages you might need or any other documentation that you would like for your students to have at every um, for, for every single one of their projects. You can set that up for them and modify it throughout the semester and ensure that each time a student starts a new project, they're all starting with the same base project. Um, certain system libraries work out of the box, for example, uh, uh, Git will work out of the box. Um, and also you can render to PDF or Word um, and that works out of the box as well. These are generally things for local uh, use. Uh, the user would have to set up themselves or if you are teaching uh, in a situation where your students are um, using their local 
setup they would have to install for themselves. And usually the installation and setup of these tends to require more skills than just being able to do some computing with R. All right, so now that we've uh, kind of done an introduction to RStudio Cloud, I'd like to do a few demos where I can actually take you through RStudio Cloud and talk a little bit uh, and show you a little bit about how life in RStudio Cloud works. So let's start with this uh, notion of a project. So this is what an RStudio project, uh, RStudio Cloud project looks like. Um, and here I am in then RStudio session. And the um, if you do use RStudio locally as well, um, this is basically the same idea as a local project. Um, and there is a nice UI, as I said, up top uh, as a banner where you can kind of keep track of which project you're working on. Um, Another thing that you can do is so when we're starting up a new project, you can actually uh, open up a Jupyter project as well. So this is currently in beta, but it is available. And when you fire this up, you basically get an IPython notebook um, and you can see that in the same environment. So I've just I'm still in our studio cloud, but I'm able to uh, run a Jupyter notebook as well. And you can see just like a regular Jupyter notebook, I have a little bit of um, kind of text and a little bit of code uh, intermingled and I can run my uh, cells, so on and so forth. Um, other things that you can do is you can also start with a project from a Git repository. So you can simply put the um, kind of the URL of your Git repository here. I'm cloning the praise package. That is an R package that you know gives you nice pleasantries as you run your code, uh, gives you some positive uh, reinforcement. And you can see that I'm able to clone that project and kind of start working with that as well. Uh, this does require um, that you uh, kind of sync up your GitHub account with your RStudio Cloud account, which you can do so uh, from your profile. But once that's all set up, you're able to interact with Git easily as well. Um, so teaching with RStudio Cloud beyond just using it for yourself really does not require any further um, kind of setup than this, except the fact that you probably will want to prepare some projects for your students, and you might be thinking about various ways that you can share it with them. So um, there are really two ways that I think about teaching when I'm uh, kind of thinking about what sort of um, sharing approach I'm going to use for my students. Often I ask myself the question, is this a shorter engagement, something like a workshop or a short course where I can organize content in a single RStudio project or just a few projects? And I have no need for keeping track of my learners. So that's usually for me a setting where maybe I won't be grading them or I'm not necessarily responsible for keeping track of their work over an extended period of time. If that's the case, you can simply create a project like we've shown before and share that project simply by sharing its URL. If you have a longer engagement, so that is perhaps a semester long course or a multi day workshop where there's lots of content. And instead of kind of putting all of that into a single or just a few RStudio uh, projects, you can think about it as many, many projects that need to happen throughout a semester. So maybe many homework assignments, a final project, some lab work, so on and so forth and you have a need or desire to keep track of your learners either for grading purposes or because you want to assess either for your um, kind of enjoyment or uh, to be able to give feedback to the students how much they're interacting with the um, with both the platform and also the learning materials that you've prepared for them in that case i recommend creating a workspace and then inviting your students to that workspace so i'm going to demo both of these approaches next so let's start with sharing and our studio cloud project so we're in the instructor view here you can see that i have prepared a single r studio project and I have a few folders in there where I've organized my teaching materials. This happens to be a short course I gave on introduction to Shiny. So we have four modules in this short course and I've created those and put them in my files pane. Um, and what I'm going to do is um, I can kind of show you the inside these folders. We can see that I have kind of the, uh, um, the R scripts that I want to share with my learners. 
And um, I also have packages installed as well. So um, I am installing any packages that I'm going to use in this uh, short course uh, for my uh, students so that when they come in, they can simply run the code and they don't have to worry about installing packages as well. It's not that difficult to install packages, but this ensures that everybody is using the same version of the package. Um, I have prepared everything for them. And um, what I can do next is make my project shareable. It's private by default, but I can go to access and say anyone can share view this project now um, and just grab its URL. Now, when I say anyone can view the project, I should mention that even though anyone can now see this. It's only if I share the URL with them. It's kind of privacy by obscurity. You can see that URL has some random numbers at the end and just about anyone couldn't just guess what that is, obviously. So, um, so we, we're, I'm going to have to kind of grab that URL now that I've enabled sharing. And then I share that with my learners. Uh, so I maybe email it to them or message it to them or something. And all they need to do is put that in their browser and they're going to need to log in. Um, they might choose to log in with Google or GitHub or something else, uh, or like an RStudio cloud account. Um, and you can see that they're in the same um, kind of looking environment and they don't need to install a package anymore. They can simply load a package because the package for them is already installed and they have the in same file structure as I have, um, and they're able to run the code. I want to grab your attention to, or uh, point your attention to one more thing here. Just under student view on my slide, it says temporary copy. So when a student receives this link, they're in a temporary copy of this project. Um, and what they can do is next to that, there's a button that says save a permanent copy and they can make it their own. At that point, our studio cloud is simply grabbing a snapshot of that project and making a copy for the student that they can continue working on. And when they come back, they're able to continue working on their own copy and any changes they make basically does not propagate back to my project um, and also does not get lost either. Um, so this idea of sharing an RStudio cloud project on the plus side is super easy. First of all, I created my project and all I had to do was to flip a switch for shareability and share the URL. Um, other pluses associated with it is that students land directly in a project upon login. So, you know, we're telling them we're teaching our studio and we give them a URL and they're right there. There's no additional steps they need to do. Um, I find that beyond teaching, um, this sort of pro uh, sharing a project is actually great for just collaboration, uh, particularly if I have collaborators with whom I want to share my code, but maybe they're not, you know, Git or GitHub users, so that's not the path we want to go, or to create some reproducible examples that might be a bit more, um, you know, a uh, 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 a bit more extensive than like a little snippet you might uh, share with somebody on Slack or GitHub. So oftentimes if I'm trying to debug, for example, an extensive Shiny app, even if I make it pretty minimal, I find that there's a lot of code there to just post into a message. So often I'll create a single RStudio Cloud project and then it ends up having the packages that I have installed ready to go as well to share with somebody else to ask a question. Now, on the negative side, um, that temporary copy thing with even with the handy save a permanent copy button next to it can sometimes get students because they need to remember to make a permanent copy of the project, um, which honestly, as an instructor to you, means you need to remind them to do so. Um, otherwise, their work can get lost. Um, also, as an instructor, you can't keep track of which students started their assignment because once they make a copy, they own that. And they, um, if they want you to take a look at their project, you need to be granted permission back. You don't have that by default, even though you have originally shared it with them. Um, the permanent other things that could be a plus or a minus, the, uh, depending on your situation, is that these permanent projects, once the student has make, makes the permanent project, they count towards their student's free account. So if you're an instructor who is not wanting to kind of use up your um, account's usage, um, this, that might be a plus. 
Or if you're an instructor who is thinking, I would like to make sure that I'm offering this to my students, uh, you know, for free forever, uh, this may not be the right setup for you. Um, also, students control permissions on their project. This can also be a pro or a con. Um, it's nice for them to have this control, but that might also mean that they are sharing it very liberally. So if you're teaching in a setting where, um, you know, things like, uh, maybe giving an assignment that students should not be collaborating on in any way, should not see each other's code, um, this might make it easier for them to do something that they're not supposed to do. Obviously, uh, you know, disallowing this sort of permission, uh, permissions from the students does not mean you're going to be ensure that no academic dishonesty occurs. But generally my motto when I'm teaching is I try to not make it additionally easier for my students to do something that I don't want them to do. So if you're giving assignments and you're saying you can't see each other's code, um, this may, again, may not be the right approach for you. Um, so we've talked about creating a single project and sharing that. And I mentioned that this is a useful approach for kind of short engagements. But what about for longer engagements where um, maybe you're teaching a semester long course and you need things a little better organized? So in that case, the approach that you might take is inviting your students to an RStudio Cloud workspace. So I'm again here on the instructor view, um, and you can say that on top, um, on the top bar, it says your workspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the little menu next to it and create a new space. So in this case, I'm creating a space for a new course that I'm giving. Um, I'll call that Shiny Essentials. And now that I have moved into this new workspace, I can create projects in here. Um, so these projects are only going to be accessible to folks that are in this workspace. So I can similarly uh, create modules um, for my um, students to learn from, and I can set things up in um, in many ways. Um, so when I go to share this project, you can see that it now sh says everyone in Shiny Essentials, and it allows me to turn it into an assignment as well. Uh, what this means is when the students land in this workspace, they're going to see this first project, and it says instead of assignment next to it, it will say start for them. So they can get started with a permanent copy of their own that lives in this RStudio Cloud workspace. So they don't have to remember to you know, make a copy for themselves. Um, once students have uh, started their assignments, I, as the instructor, can track their projects as well. So in this case, I was teaching this Shiny Essentials course um, and over the four modules, you can see that there, uh, there are many uh, kind of derived projects from each of these. So 187 students came to this project and they made their own permanent copies and they started working on them. And I can actually go in, click on that view derived projects um, link, and I can go in and see my students' names and even open up their RStudio Cloud projects. So if somebody is having difficulty to the point where we're unable to like help them get unstuck by, you know, maybe discussion forum posts or something, I can actually go in and directly help them in their RStudio session. Um, another thing is, um, so how do we get students into this workspace? Um, under the members tab within your uh, workspace, you can see the names of your members. So I have grayed those out for privacy reasons, but you can see that I can scroll through and see um, who the members are of this workspace. And I can invite more folks either via an invitation. So I would need to enter their email address and send it to them, or I can use a sharing link. So I can create a sharing link, set a particular default role for that sharing link and simply uh, share the link with them. And at some point I can reset that link if I want, if I want no further people to continue to join the workspace. Um, so these particular roles are admin, 
moderator, contributor, and viewer. Um, I think about these as the admin is the instructor. So that's me. I can do whatever I want. I can manage users. I can view, edit, and manage all of the projects. Um, the moderator level to me uh, in an instructional setting is more like my TA. They can view, edit, and manage all projects, but they don't have the privileges to uh, get more people in or kick people out of the class. A contributor are my students. They can create, edit, and manage their own projects only. They don't get to touch other people's projects. And then the viewer role is something that I think that, you know, that, that you may not even use at all, but instances where I've used it have been either auditors to the class or um, guests. So these people can only view projects that are shared with everyone and no other projects. Um, sometimes I have colleagues who want to... Um, who want to uh, perhaps take a peek at what's happening in my class uh, to kind of take a look to see how I've set up my um, RStudio uh, Cloud workspace, for example, but I perhaps don't want them to see my students' names or, or their projects. So that's the role I have mostly used um, that for. Um, we can also set permissions and these come unchecked by default and I would recommend leaving them that way unless you have good reason to do so. Uh, one of them, for example, is about whether contributors can see the members list. Another one is whether they can contributors can make their projects visible to all members. I usually leave that unchecked because I don't want my students to readily share their assignments with each other. Um, and then there's uh, other settings in terms of what the viewers can do and and who can change the computational resources. And I'll talk a little bit about what I mean by computational resources in a little bit. Um, another um, um, perk of using this workspace setting is perhaps my favorite one is this notion of a base RStudio project. So what that is, is a project that you can set. So it's an RStudio uh, project that you can set to say, this is the image I want every single project to start with. So I can actually uh, put, decide on the version of R I want everyone to use, the installed packages and their versions that I want everyone to use, and also any files that I want every single project in my workspace to contain. Usually for me, those are things like a statement of code of conduct, uh, maybe some instructions for how to submit work. Um, they're not things that change from assignment to assignment. They're things that need to stay constant. They're the sort of things you might tell your students, go read in the syllabus. So I end up putting those there. Um, these base projects can be updated throughout the semester, uh, which means that, say, a newer version of a package you use comes and you want to be able to teach with the newer functionality that's been implemented, mid-semester you can update the base project so that going forward you're using a newer version of that package and every project that's starting from that point onwards is affected by this update, but it's not retroactive and that's good because you're not going to break old work students may have done. Um, I think this is also a really nice um, perk because um, when you are using kind of maybe an RStudio in the server type setup that may be shared um, throughout the university or throughout your department with maybe other instructors, Oftentimes, IT professionals would be hesitant to update this sort of base image because changes that you make could affect others as well. But by the, by the definition of a workspace, it's only your class and you're the um, only per, your class is the only um, set of projects who are going to be affected by this change. So you really can do as you please. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this approach as well. We talked about various permission levels as a pro and this notion of a base project. Um, the notion of assignments, which remove the need to remind students to make copy of their projects before starting their work, and um, the ability to peek into student projects 
and ability to view stats on student engagement. So you can take a look at the dashboard to see how much uh, kind of compute your students may have been using. And I'll mention in a second that we have a package that you can use to speak to the R Studio Cloud API to get further information about which of your students have been active. Um, I know a few folks are using that sort of data for pedagogical research, for example, to quantify engagement of students with the, um, with the work. Um, in the negative side, perhaps if I could pick on something, and I think really here the negatives are very small, um, is that when students land in a workspace, when they get invited, they just land in that main page, not in an RStudio project. So you're going to want to spend a minute or two orienting your students about what they need to do next. But that's the sort of thing you really need to say once, and then it's quite clear to them what they need to do the next time they get there. Um, when we talk about things that could be pros or cons, um, the student work counts towards the instructor or the institution workspace hours. Um, that means that if you, if the kind of the free uh, plan is not sufficient for the amount of work your students are doing, um, which very well might be the case if this is like a semester long course, you need to have set up things where the um, student, uh, so their hours will count uh, towards the limits that you have set up for your workspace. Um, also, another one that could be a pro or a con is that instructor controls permission of students' projects. So um, if you are running a course where you want things to be readily shareable, um, you would perhaps check that box, the permission box, to allow your students to um, you know, make their projects shareable. Um, but by default, it would not be the case. Um, so now that we've talked a little bit about how to get students into your RStudio Cloud space and how to share um, your materials with them, I'll kind of try to wrap things up, um, but with some tips before we perhaps move into a bit of a QA. and a um, So the first tip that I would um, mention is that changes to an assignment that you make um, that after a student has started won't propagate to their copy. So this is not like Google Docs in a way, is I think the best way to describe it. When your student makes a copy of a project you have set up for them in either of the sharing approaches, they're really taking a snapshot at that time. So if you need to change your assignment, and I'm sure we've all been there, you assign a homework assignment, then you realize something is wrong, you're going to need to get that information to to them in another way or have them start with a new project or have your projects be linked to a git repository as well and you can change that git repository and ask your students to pull the changes in um, packages in the base project are installed but not loaded so when you're writing your instructions you want to remind yourself uh, remind your students to do library whatever package name uh, because they won't be able to use it immediately in the console um, the late, this information is always on the RStudio Cloud guide and the What's New page. Um, RStudio Cloud is still evolving. It is not um, changing um, in terms of um, it's not changing in terms of like in a way where it's going to be a completely different UI the next day your students land in it. But there are new features uh, being added, um, and so it's nice to keep up with those. And if you encounter any sort of slowness or glitches, say your students are reporting, we can't log on, um, there's a current system status um, link on the side that's super handy. It allows you to check to see if there's a real outage, and if not, you can go ahead and report it. Um, other tips is I strongly recommend creating an additional account. So I have this like additional account with another personal email address I had, and I invite that uh, persona as a student, so as a contributor into my workspace, so that I can log in, log in and see things, um, the students see them. That can be helpful when you are um, kind of taking screenshots for your students as well, if that's the sort of thing you like to put in your instructions. Um, you can set computational resources allowed to projects. Um, by default, um, you get a decent amount, but if you're working with either bigger data sets or, um, uh, you know, or doing something that's more computationally intensive, uh, 
one second, then the default uh, settings would be sufficient for. Um, you may want to up those computational resources um, that are um, available to each project. And the one way to figure out if this is going to be needed is to actually test your assignment. So if you write answer keys, for example, you may try running them in RStudio Cloud to make sure things hold up. The one place where this can be difficult to foresee ahead of time can be if you have open-ended projects for your students, because then maybe you have no control over exactly what they're going to work on, how big a data set they're going to bring. So it's nice to have a feedback loop and explain to your students a little bit um, that if things are lagging or slow or just like they're trying to run some code or things and are hanging, it very well might be that the resources allowed it aren't sufficient and they can bring that up to you and you can set that for them after they've started the project as well. So those are things you can change at any point in a project's life. Um, I would, the peeking at your students functionality is super nice, but from a pedagogical perspective, I would recommend uh, that you use that feature sparingly. It's important for us to teach our students how to ask good questions without us saying, hey, just move away from the keyboard, I'll do it for you. Because that's a little bit of that. Move away from the computer, let me take over and do it. And sometimes that's exactly what a student needs. Um, but it's useful for them to try to articulate the question first and not go there right away. Um, I also use that assignment feature for things that are not assignments as well. So even if I don't necessarily expect the students to complete and turn in something, um, you might still use that feature because it's just a handy feature to say, let me get started with where you left things off. And so one of the things I do is if I'm doing any sort of live coding in class, I'll create a skeleton of what I'm going to get through, maybe with some prompts throughout an R Markdown file and leave that as an RStudio Cloud project for students to get started with as I start coding as well. Um, there are various uh, kind of plans that you uh, can choose for our studio cloud and there's a free plan as well and for kind of either hobby usage or uh, kind of short uh, amounts of teaching that what's allowed there um, allotted there might very well be sufficient but I've found that if I'm teaching a course with many students over a 15 week semester I probably need either the instructor or the organization uh, plan and if there are questions about the um, if there are questions about the um, these various plans I will be able to answer them at the end as well um, I'll also mention the RS Cloud package. Um, it's not currently on CRAN, but it is available on GitHub, and our goal is to get that on CRAN perhaps sometimes in 2022. Um, but it has a nice set of functions where, as you can see, you can query the API to get a list of your users, to get some information on their statistics, like are they still engaging or not. Um, you can use it to send invitations. Uh, so it's almost like you get to upload a raw and send invitations to all of your students. So if you are um, using our Studio Cloud heavily, and particularly with large groups of uh, members and students, um, the package might very well be helpful for you, especially if you're like me and you don't like clicking around things too much and you'd rather script things up. Um, if, you if you do start working with RS Cloud, you're going to need an API key, which you can get uh, in the RStudio Cloud UI. So just from your profile, you can go ahead and request an API key. And if there's features that you would like to see in this package, please open an issue. I'm actively working on it and uh, we'd be happy to try to implement them or at least let you know if that's not feasible uh, due to the setup of the API. And if you would like to learn more about RStudio Cloud, uh, Jesse Mostapak has put together this really nice uh, playlist of uh, kind of short videos on YouTube that are about, you know, individual things you might want to do on RStudio Cloud. Um, so um, I recommend taking a look at that as well. Um, I think there may be there may be stuff you're familiar with, but sometimes it's nice to see how somebody else approaches it. And there very well might be things that you didn't know existed there as well. All right, I think that's it for me. Once again, the slides for this can be found at rstd.io slash rscloud-demo, and I would be happy to take any questions. Thanks for listening.
Hey, Mine, thank you so much. That was uh, super interesting. Hopefully our guest um, walked away uh, learning something new. Uh, in terms of Q&A, I think we have a few lined up. Uh, for anyone that might have joined a little late, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to enter those on the YouTube live chat and we'll, uh, we'll be sure to surface them. I'm going to start with a, a question that I actually get pretty often. Let me get this up on the screen here. Uh, so I get asked a lot about base projects. Could you talk a little bit more about how you handled those scenarios uh, before the base project concept existed? Yeah, so if if I don't have access to this notion of a base project, uh, what that means is that every time I set up an assignment, I have to install the packages that are needed for that assignment. For me, that often means I need to install Tidyverse, for example. So homework one, install Tidyverse. Homework two, install Tidyverse. And any other projects as well. Another thing is submission instructions is also another thing that comes up a lot, like, or any sort of like, um, you know, these are the things you're allowed to do for this assignment. These are the things you're not allowed to do. So I would have this like text file, um, that's like a plain text file that has this information that I would upload to every single uh, assignment. Um, the way I tend to teach in a workspace, my students are rarely creating a project just out of the blue in there. They're often starting off of an assignment that I have prepared for them. So the base projects have mostly made my life easier as I create new assignments. Um, but every once in a while, there may be a situation where your student just wants to create a project in there and work on something uh, related to the class, but maybe not necessarily attached to any assignment. And then they get the benefit of using the same R version and the version of packages that you have pre-installed for them as well. Um, the other thing that I really like about the base projects is that I can update them throughout the semester and they don't break uh, projects that happened in the past. So student work doesn't get affected, but I get to benefit from, say, a new update that may have come up in a package. Interesting. Uh, I see Brad just sent over a question that I think you somewhat touched on, but just to make sure uh, that they heard the answer. Is there a way to distribute data files to students without setting up a project? So if you're not setting up a project, so if you're setting up a project, upload it there, and then it's distributed. If you're not setting up a project, um, there isn't necessarily an RStudio Cloud specific way of um, getting it to them. But ways that you might use is if you have access to a place where you can upload your data sets, and that very well might just be a GitHub repository, that would be a free place to host them. For example, um, you can you know host them there, and then a lot of the data reading functions will take a URL as an input as well. So even if the data set doesn't exist, um, I don't want to use the word locally. I suppose everything is in the cloud, but in that project for those students, um, they can read directly from a URL as well. Um, also, if the goal is to teach students how to get data into something, what you might do is, so this is something I've done as well, where sometimes I don't want to just put the file the data files for them into their files pane i want them to learn how to do that so what i'll do in my instructions is i'll have instructions for downloading a data set onto their computer so that we can teach them how to upload a data set into the rstudio cloud project and the reason why i do that with some of my earlier assignments is that for their final project, they have to find a data set and bring it in. So I want to make sure that they have had some practice with bringing in their own data set before we get to that point. That makes a ton of sense. Uh, looks like the next question. Uh, lots of instructors use a learning management system. So curious, how have you handled grading? Um, so the way I have been teaching over the last five or six years is that I actually teach version control alongside data science and every single assignment is not only an RStudio Cloud project, but it's also a GitHub repository. And so we actually do our submission in a way or grading by pushing to GitHub ultimately. Um, there is currently not a grading feature in RStudio Cloud. So there's not a way where you like maybe assigned to each project, you know, not a place where you can actually store a grade with it. But I believe that's like 
in the pipeline of at least feature requests that has come uh, from um, from other instructors as well. So that very well might be something that's um, included later. Even in instances where we've had grading, but no like uh, version control or GitHub associated with my teaching, I would have either myself or my TAs go into the particular projects. And the nice thing is if you have an assignment that you have set up, the title of that assignment is always the same. I guess your students could mess you up and change them, but they generally don't. So what you end up seeing is, let's say your homework one, and then you can see, as I saw on, showed on my slides, like view derived projects, and you can go through, go into your students' um, uh, projects, grade their work, and oftentimes what I'll have is like a CSV file I keep locally where I enter the final grades. You can create new files in their um, projects as well to leave them feedback if you would like to as well. Thank you. I see Ryan just sent across a question. Uh, would you recommend a particular PKI key management package that works well with RCDO Cloud, uh, say like I'm pulling data from uh, Qualtrics? Um, I have to ask what PKI is because I'm not sure what it stands for, but maybe I could find out for myself. Uh, or maybe yeah. it'll come in in the chat. <laughs> uh, Ryan, if you can clarify what PKI is, I would be happy to um, try to answer that question. Public key infrastructure, I think maybe is what it is. Um, hmm, good question. So this would be something where you basically want to um, store some sort of public key in your project. Um, I think I'm going to say the closest I have experience I have to this is, um, you know, maybe storing my um, personal access token for GitHub, which you can do. So however you're storing these in an R session, um, if you're lo working locally, you should be able to do so on our Studio Cloud as well. One thing I'll mention is, um, any sort of user level information as such does not get shared between your projects in your RStudio Cloud profile. So you would have to set those things on a per project basis, which can be a hassle or it might be actually a positive if you're actually trying to test, you know, access levels with various keys. Um, but and I, I don't I don't have a recommendation for a specific package, but whatever has worked for you locally should work on our studio cloud as well for that. Thanks, Mina. I, I see Ryan did confirm uh, that that meant public mm -hmm. keys. Uh, next question looks like from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, is there a way to integrate with NB greater? Um, not to my knowledge as of now, but that being said, I am not a heavy NB grader user, so don't, you know, full quote me on that. Um, so the one thing that, you know, I know that um, NB grader works very nicely with Jupyter Notebook. So I don't think our Studio Cloud has like a specific thing for NB grader as of today. That being said, however, you tend to set up NB grader for grading from like Jupyter Notebooks should work here as well. Um, I don't know how you would handle things where you hide the tests from your students, but as long as all of that stuff can live in the same session, it could be using the same compute and would could still be giving the automated feedback. Interesting. Well, while we're uh, on the topic, I'm curious about a single sign-on. Uh, here's the question. My school requires SSO. Can RStudio Cloud integrate with my school's existing authentication setup? I think the answer is yes. The, the answer right? is yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might know more about this because you've worked with various other schools, Pete. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to speak to that. So uh, d depending on your school's existing SSO setup, um, we very likely can integrate with it. I know some of the popular ones are uh, Shibboleth and uh, SAML. Uh, and if you're using something else, uh, please feel free to reach out. I, I know some institutions utilize uh, Google Auth, uh, which is another one uh, that, that should not be an issue. And keeping up with the current topics, you mentioned Jupyter. So is it true you could access Jupyter Notebooks with RStudio Cloud? 
Yes, I believe this is still in beta, but you can uh, request that access, uh, right? If you have a paid plan, I think maybe you can request that. So it is true and it is trickling down the pipeline to be like, a, I think uh, just as much of a, as a, our studio project, a first class citizen there, but it is certainly working, yeah. Great, yeah, and just uh, for folks out there that are interested, it is currently in beta. We will uh, be transitioning to general availability by end of this quarter. And as Mine said, if you're on a paid tier, you can get access to the beta. And even if you're not on a paid tier, if you have a use case you're super interested in, you know, trying out with that, just feel free to shoot us an email. Uh, it's uh, Pete at rstudio.com, and uh, we can see if we can set you up regardless. Looks like we have a few more questions trickling in. Uh, here we go. Uh, a while ago, I noticed hitches taking hours to install all packages when opening my RStudio Cloud project in Ubuntu uh, that I created in Windows. Um, so I think that I, I, I don't know that that's necessarily like a problem of, you know, being created in one uh, operating system and then opening in another. I, I would imagine that that is not the cause of that. Five moments. Uh, that is not the ca cause of that. Um, but it is true that the uh, package install was taking a bit longer. Um, I don't know if this is currently in the deployed version of it, but I know that some changes have happened very um, recently in our Studio Cloud where all of that stuff should be working a little bit faster right now. And one thing I'll say is that there's this um, tool, our product, our Studio Package Manager that has made like package installation and keeping track of versions for kind of whatever your uh, setup might be a lot easier for various folks and whatever advances are happening uh, in that are kind of like the goal is to absorb them into our studio cloud as much as possible. So you should be seeing uh, speed up there. Another thing I will mention, though, this may be only relevant if you are kind of um, uh, using this in the teaching context, perhaps. But even if things take a while, if you use this notion of a base project, things take a while only once, which is, I think, another nice thing that each person starting up a project doesn't have to wait through the installation of those. Only the first time you install them into the base, you may wait through it, and then the rest should work more quickly. Thank you. Uh, let's see, is real-time collaborative coding coming to our Studio Cloud? I think that is coming. That is certainly, well, it is my personally most rec like highly requested feature whenever I'm asked, what would you like to see there? That's literally the first thing I say. And of course, it's coming from others as well. Um, and yes, that is certainly something the team is working on. I'm really excited to see what it might look like. I hope we'll be able to catch a glimpse of that sometime in this year. Yeah, so I, I can tell you from my perspective that our team is is working on that, and I believe the plan, uh, similar to the the Jupyter notebooks, is to have that available uh, by the end of the quarter. But we'll we'll certainly keep folks up to date as that progresses. Um, let's see. Here we go from Robert. I would like to see a demo of the RS Cloud package for management. Will that be offered anytime soon? This would be very useful for us to leverage here. Um, so, uh, like a uh, like a demo on using the RS Cloud package in terms of what you can do with that. I think that's the question, right? I, I believe that's the question. And Mine, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe we do have a, at least a brief video recording of, of how you can use that. Um, we, we could certainly surface that. And yeah. if there's something additional, uh, Robert, mm -hmm. that you might be looking for, um, please feel free to follow up with us. Again, my email is Pete, as in Peter, at rstudio.com, and we can certainly set up something for you. Yeah, so one of the videos that where I showed on that playlist that Jesse had made is about RS Cloud. And I think that, you know, if, if this seems like a useful thing to do, like my goal is to try to get that package on CRAN sometime this year. It's currently functional, but there are a few feature requests in there um, that uh, we haven't done. Maybe when we do that, we can try to do one of these where we do a more extensive um, kind of demo of it as well. Perfect. Uh, Brad, I did see your question regarding how our students count it. 
Um, it really depends on your um, your membership type. Uh, so happy to take that offline. I just threw my email in there if you want to follow up with me and, and we can clarify that uh, for your particular use case. Um, let's see, we have about five more minutes. Here is a good one. Uh, do instructors have to cover all students' costs? I think the answer is no. It really depends on how you want to approach this. So I will I will tell you about my experience of the various things that we've done, like kind of on the instructor side, and then Pete might have more to add on that as well. Um, I think that um, one of the things you may want to consider is, am I the only instructor at my institution who is doing this? Or are there other instructors as well, say various courses in a given department? Because this notion of instead of an instructor account, an organization account might actually be the right fit for you, especially if you have students who are taking like multiple classes for which they might be using our Studio Cloud for. That was the setup that we had um, last year when I was at the University of Edinburgh. Um, and I believe coming down the pipeline, if it's not live now, is a notion where students could pay for access even though they're in your workspace, right, Pete? Th that's correct. So historically, the uh, instructor, uh, again, depending on membership type, is either gonna cover the cost, the school's gonna cover the cost, or if the students do directly cover the cost, uh, today there might not actually be an integration between the student's account and the instructor's account, which as you can imagine, can be a little limiting when it comes to, to nice features like being able to peek in and see how your students are, are doing. Uh, so as Mina just um, alluded to, we are working on a new plan where if you'd like, um, the students could actually uh, pay for uh, their actual usage. Uh, so, so there's going to be more options for for how to spin up our Studio Cloud for your particular use case at your institution. We're hoping to provide that new option in the next week or two if, if things stay on track. Let's see. So a couple more minutes here. Do have a few more questions trickling in. Um, to try our Studio Cloud, is the free tier robust or should I trial a paid tier? I think that the free tier is, there is no, I mean, in terms of what things that I would consider robustness, there should be no reason why you can't try things out with the free tier. I think you end up running into limitations of the free tier really when you are trying to offer a particular type of experience to either a large group of people or over an extended period of time. So I know from an instructional perspective, lots of folks who run short courses or workshops who just use the free tier for that. Yeah, in my experience, the free tier is not really too limiting in terms of features or capabilities. It's more so the amount of time you have access to it in a given month and the amount of mm -hmm. um, collaborators, users that you could share projects with. Um, let's see. So depending on course type, does it make sense to use cloud for the entirety of the course or to have students transition to local machines at some point? So that's a really good question and a question that often comes up. I'm often like whenever I make a pitch for let's teach on the cloud, the first thing is, but don't they need to learn to install and, and potentially yes. So first of all, I'll couch this with, well, it really depends on the learning goals of your course, right? If part of the learning goals of your course is software installation, then yes, it does uh, make sense to transition. I'll give you my perspective of someone who generally uses uh, uh teaches introductory courses um i like starting things on the cloud and one of the things that i try to make sure that the students understand is that the cloud is not just this esoteric thing it actually is somebody else's machine so we want to make sure that before students leave your course they understand what it means for things to live on the cloud which means if they then get involved with say a research project that might have private data associated with it they shouldn't just upload it to our studio cloud without making sure that that's okay. So I think it's important to explain to students what that is. Um, if you would like to teach installation as part of it, because you think that would be a useful thing for students to learn, um, maybe to continue to engage with our studio down the line, even if they're not taking a course, that uses any of this cloud access, then absolutely, I think it's super helpful to point them to resources or take a bit of class time to do it. And the nice thing about doing it later is that they're not both new to R 
and installation issues. So they are going to be able to distinguish between what is an R error versus what might be an error that might be happening due to my setup. Um, so I think that doing that uh, later on in the course um, can have some of those benefits. And the last thing I'll say on this is when people then go on to do things past university life, chances are they're going to continue to do it on the cloud. I mean, I think very few industry jobs allow you to just like bring your own laptop and compute on it. And also a lot of academic computing all happens on research computing clusters as well. So this notion of doing things on the cloud happens to ease onboarding, but it's not just some baby steps thing. That's not a realistic situation, I think. Interesting. So we're, we're coming down to the last minute here. So just one final question that I think should be pretty straightforward. Does Workbench mm -hmm. have the same virtual classroom capability which cloud provides? Um, I'm going to say yes and no. Absolutely yes in the sense that um, you can have like packages pre-installed for your students and you can um, uh, you can put some files in there, right? And then they can just have them as well. You can like associate it with a file system and they can authenticate and work there. The no part is really on the UI, I think. So you don't have this notion of projects the same way our Studio Cloud projects we could see on the user interface of the learning page. There's not a notion of an assignment either. Uh, so there are some of these kind of the nice bells and whistles or various roles. These are not things that you are going to have by default with Workbench, but does it allow compute on the cloud with the RStudio ID interface? Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Mine, it looks like we're at time. Really appreciate this. And uh, again, I, I hope all folks that joined and were able to tune in and ask questions um, walked away learning something new. Uh, if anyone was um, only able to come on for the last couple minutes, we did record this, so it'll be uh, fully available shortly. And again, this is our last event uh, in this live cloud series. We are hoping to do another live cloud series in a few months. And with that, I will wish everyone a good day.